So when you first confront the Laplace transform and differential equations, it might seem like an overly complicated way of solving equations that we already know how to solve. You spend an entire semester basically learning all sorts of cool techniques to solve differential equations, and then the Laplace transform just seems to throw everything out and start over again. Why would you bother with the Laplace transform? Well, the answer to that has to do with my favorite unfunction, the delta function. If you're an engineer, then you've probably heard a mathematician scream and cry that the delta function isn't a function. And they're right, it isn't. And that's why we need the Laplace transform. Let's look at this differential equation. It's a second order linear ODE, and we have a forcing function on the right, g of t. Now, g of t can be called a forcing function, an input, or even a controller. Let's assume the initial conditions x of zero and x prime of zero are both zero. It's not only a convenient assumption, but it is also theoretically necessary owing to the definition of the Laplace transform on what are called distributions, like the delta function. So the Laplace transform gives us a quadratic polynomial times x of s is equal to g of s. Solving for x of s, we get this. Now, we have two pieces here. One is actually fundamental to our system, this rational function here, and we have this g of s which comes from our input. So how would we isolate it, you know, this transfer function? We would select a g of t that gives g of s is equal to 1. But if we look at this table, we see that we don't have a function that gives us 1 for a Laplace transform. And indeed, no function does. Here comes the delta function. It's not really something that can exist outside of an integral, but when it is an inside integral, we see that the integral from zero to infinity of a function times the delta function returns the evaluation of that second function at zero. So the Laplace transform of the delta function, well, it's just e to the zero or one. Hence, the transfer function is what we get when we select g of t is equal to delta t. We usually describe delta in a cartoon form as a giant impulse at zero and zero everywhere else. This comes from some common ways of estimating the delta function with a whole bunch of spiky functions. So the transfer function is the Laplace transform of the system output with an impulsive input or the impulse response. But then this differential equation doesn't actually make sense without an integral around it. So if you want to solve it, you need to cast it under an integral using the Laplace transform. Now that we understand this, once we know the impulse response of a function, we can describe the response of the system to any input. This is because we can take a product of Laplace transforms and invert them in the time domain with the convolution. Now the hard part is actually coming up with a coherent definition of the Laplace transform of a delta function. If you want to see how deep that rabbit hole goes, you can check out this video here. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. If you did, please consider subscribing. In any case, I hope you have a great day.